Hello again. Uh, today I want to show you uh, a system, a typical mechanical system uh, consisting of a mass, spring, and a damper. And this would be a case of free vibration, so there is no force acting on the mass. So the, the system is going to be disturbed by giving it an initial position, initial velocity. Uh, and this would be a system that is under damp. So quickly, the differential equation of, of a system like this would be mass times acceleration mx double dot, that would be acceleration of that, plus c times x dot, that's the force of the damper, plus k times x, and that's the force of a spring, and equals zero. So this is a homogeneous second order differential equation. Now, typically what we do, we divide by mass here, that's called normalizing the differential equation. And then if we define some new um, term here, so for example, if we say k over m is the natural frequency omega n squared, so omega n would be a square root of that. And if we define a damping ratio denoted by zeta as the ratio of c divided by, which is the damping coefficient, damping constant, divided by square root of uh, 2km, which also could be written as 2m omega n, then actually this differential equation, first of all, the mass is going to get canceled. The, this ratio of C over M becomes actually 2 zeta omega N. So the differential equation will become X double dot plus 2 zeta omega N. And remember the last term here, the ratio of K over M here is omega N squared. So we have omega N squared. So this would be, I'm sorry, X dot here omega n squared times x equals zero. So now basically we are trying to solve this second order differential equation with the new um, you know, symbols here. So what makes a system underdamped? Basically these uh, parameters here, these physical parameters like the mass, spring constant, and the damper will determine if a system is underdamped. And for that to be true, this damping ratio has to be between 0 and 1, greater than 0, but less than 1. That means your system is under damped. So basically, uh, once the system is under damped, then the solution to an under damped uh, system. So under damped basically means the roots of the characteristic equations are complex and they come always in a pair as complex conjugates. So what is the solution to an underdamped uh, case where zeta, remember, is between 0 and 1? The solution basically could be uh, simplified in this form. x as a function of time, which is the position of the mass of the system, is going to be some constant a, e to the power minus zeta omega n times t. So this is what we call a decay envelope. And then attached to this would be a sine wave of omega d, now I'm going to define this for you, times t, plus some phase angle phi. So now what is this new term here, omega d? Omega d is called the damped frequency because we have a natural frequency which is right here, is the square root of k over m. And we have a damped frequency which is equal to natural frequency times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. This is called the damped damped frequency. So damped frequency omega sub d is always smaller than natural frequency. Remember you only have damped frequency if you have an under damped system. Damped frequency doesn't exist or is not defined if you have a so-called so critically damped or over damped. Okay so now the next question is how do you determine uh, these constants, the constants A and phi. Well, that has to be determined based on the initial condition. So let me give you the formulas for them. And it's very easy actually to uh, prove this uh, and determine this or derive this. So let me go to the next page. So phi, this phase angle, becomes inverse tan of uh, inverse tan of x0 omega d divided by v0 plus zeta omega n times x0. Now, remember that 
What are these x0 and v0? These are your initial conditions. So basically at t equals 0, x becomes x0, and x dot becomes the initial velocity. So the mass is going to be disturbed maybe with some initial position, initial uh, velocity. So that's how you find phi, and how do you find the, this constant, which is ki kind of like amplitude? This one actually becomes uh, square root of in the numerator of basically what you see in the denominator of the, the, the equation above squared plus actually the numerator of that the same equation above squared this whole thing is under square root divided by omega d okay so let me give you an example here let's look at an example all right a simple example let's say the mass is equal to one kilogram right the k which is the stiffness is 10 newtons per meter and c which is the damping coefficient has a value of 2 newton seconds per meter and the system is subjected to an initial condition of x0 equal 0 so no disturbance in terms of position but why don't we give it an initial velocity x dot which is actually our v0 equal say two centimeters per second okay so what is the solution what is x as a function of time so first we have to show that this system is under damped so we go ahead and find uh, zeta zeta is remember is equal to the ratio of c divided by square root of 2 km and if you plug in the numbers remember c is 2 divided by 2 square root of k is 10 and m is 1 so this actually zeta becomes 1 over root 10 which is about 0.361 so this just uh, verifies that this is an under damp system so remember zeta has to be between 0 and 1 and that's the case okay then I'm gonna go ahead and find omega and remember omega n is the square root of k over m so in this case, that becomes the square root of 10 over 1, which is just the square root of 10, which is, and the unit of that is 10 radians per second. Remember, zeta is dimensionless, this guy. Okay, let's go to the next page. So now that I have determined that the system is under damped and I got my omega n, all I have to do is to find a and phi. So phi, remember, was what? Inverse tan of... Uh, in the numerator we had x0 but x0 remember is 0 the initial position so doesn't matter what I have in the denominator inverse tan of 0 is what I get and therefore the phase angle is equal to 0 and then similarly if I look for a remember a let me go back remember a is right here v0 remember x0 is 0 so this is gone x0 is 0 is gone so v0 squared comes out of the radical as v0 divided by omega d now I have not determined omega d so let me go ahead and find omega d for you so I'll come over here and say well what is omega d omega d is remember it's called damped frequency so actually if you plug in your numbers here remember this is root 10 squared right Omega d actually becomes 3, 3 radians per second. Omega d, remember, is always less than omega n. Omega n is root 10, which is more than 3 radians per second. So look, guys, this becomes v0 divided by omega d. Again, let's go back and look. v0 here divided by omega d. So remember, v0, we say, is 2 centimeters per second, and this guy is 3 radians per second, so it becomes 2 thirds. So now our solution becomes basically a e to the minus zeta omega n. Zeta times omega n actually becomes 1. And then we just have sine 3t omega d times t with no phase angle. Remember, this is omega d, right? And our phase angle is equal to 0. So this system is an underdamped system, and kind of it will look like this. So starting at uh, zero uh, position, and there is a decay envelope like this, 
and the system will oscillate and will approach eventually zero. Okay, thank you for listening.